In life, we all encounter obstacles, and those obstacles come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. The question is, how do we handle those obstacles? Do we attack them head on, or do we allow them to make us quit? Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves, their dreams, or their goals. We will interview successful people from all walks of life as they share their no quit stories when they had the choice to give up or give in, but they didn't. We thank you for listening, and we hope to be that jolt of positivity as you go for your greatness. Welcome to episode number 134 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is integrity. Our quote of the day comes to us from C.S. Lewis. Integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Today's episode is sponsored by the good people over at West Fair Communications, who publish the Westchester County Business Journal and the Fairfield County Business Journal. These newspapers do a wonderful job in covering all aspects of the business world within two of the most influential markets in the New York metropolitan area. You can also take advantage of their daily news feeds, which keep track on the companies and thought leaders in these important regions. For more information, take a look at www.westfaironline.com. Trust me, once you start reading, you won't quit. I'm excited to bring you today's episode. Our guest is a gentleman that took a tough time in his life, but he didn't allow it to break him. Roy Red is a performance coach and best-selling author that helps people 10x their mindset and better produce in both their careers and their lives. Today, he shares his perspectives on what it takes to become your best. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Roy, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to bring it today? Uh, Every day, man. Uh, Wake up and uh, just be happy to be alive and bring that energy, bring that vibrancy every single day. No better way to be. No better way to be. So the number one objective of our show is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. And I was curious if you have either a personal story of perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that really tested you and you could have either given up or given in, but you didn't and you kept on going. Mm-hmm. So, um, I talk about it in my book. I had a had a situation where I basically was broke, depressed, and flat out embarrassed. I ended up having to push my 1987 Honda Civic on the on the 10 freeway in LA, and I was in the diamond lane, even though I wasn't supposed to be, and my car broke down. And in the diamond lane in LA, there's a median right there. And so I couldn't just get over and push my car to the side. So I had to push my car in the diamond lane for two miles all by myself with the Channel 7 news chopper looking down at me. And I was on actually on the news that day. Like uh, the reason why this traffic is held up is because this guy is pushing his 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 Honda in the diamond lane. And from there went home. Didn't know what to do. Didn't have rent money. Didn't have money to fix my car. And, you know, sometimes when you hit bottom, it springboards you to go straight back up. And I just made a decision that day. Like, you know what? I'm I'm a, I'm a smart kid. I was successful in sports. I can be successful in life. And I didn't give up in that moment. I just turned to personal development. And here I am today. That's an interesting story as far as, as as the background. And I think the fact that you can laugh about it now, obviously it didn't break you. It, it made you and it motivated you to who you are. So you, you touched on personal development. What type of personal development things or books or programs did you turn to during those tough times? So when I actually got home that day, I got lucky because in L.A. they have tow trucks that just tow your car off of the highways to keep the highway going. And the guy who towed my car off of the highway um, felt bad for me. So he was like, you know what? I'm just going to take you home. I'm going to take my lunch break to take you home. And I was like, cool. And he took me home and I got home. And I remember laying there and I was just like, I got to figure something out, man. So I literally went to Google and just typed in success in Google. And what I came up at that time was a YouTube. It was about three searches down of Jim Rohn. And I was like, who's this dude? So I clicked on it and I fell in love with him. I was watching all his YouTubes 
and everything he said about become a good note taker, read books. And I was just like, I, you know, I, I was like, I just got to do what this guy does. Maybe, you know, something will turn around in my life. And that's exactly what I did. I started reading books. Every book that he said to read, I wouldn't grab. I started reading a book a week at that time. And that was about 10 years ago now. And just from there, I just decided, like, I want to be just like this guy. I want to be successful. I want to also teach people to be successful. And I said, well, first, I got to be successful or nobody will listen to me. And so that's what I went on. And I started this little CPR business. And things at that point just started to flip for me. And I went from that moment and springboarded to six figures probably within the next three to four months after that. And I was just really fortunate. No, that's that's quite a story as far as I always like to find what are some of those things that people were listening to or reading because I think it's always interesting to share that. And it's always educational to share that to our listeners. So I wanted to ask you, Roy, if you wouldn't mind just telling our listeners a little about who you are today and exactly what you do career-wise. So today I work with collegiate high school and professional athletes and 10xing their performance um i help them overcome their mental blocks help them gain a bigger opportunity to play on the court uh using persuasive skills on their coach and on the people in their environment so they get a chance to to display their talents and i help them actually produce better on the court and the way we do that is simply with mental distinctions uh, a lot of uh Threat inoculation, I know that's a big word, just getting them to be able to deal with stress and deal with all the things that bound them in their life. A lot of athletes um, have these concepts of how they should be, and a lot of times it's keeping them from performing the way they are. So I worked with pro players like Alan Crabb, G League players like Michael Bathia, Paul Pierce, um, bunch of guys and from from there I decided to write a book wrote a book became a bestseller then one day my dad was telling me he says Roy you know everyone's an athlete performance is everything I just wish people could see that and then that's when it hit me I say you know what I want to take this to the corporate world and to schools and to everyone this is my way into you know doing what Jim Rohn did like this is my way to get into that and so I also became a speaker teaching people how to perform and how to be successful through performance and that's when I started speaking worldwide on the subject as well. That's awesome and I I commend you for taking that to the next level because a lot of people I think in the personal development world I don't want to say get stuck per se in in a specific area or category but obviously you've done well with with athletes high school college and professional and now taking into the corporate world as well as the stage so I commend you for doing that so I wanted to ask you how do you personally define success to me success is the achievement of an ideal you have for yourself so sex success is something you become And so that's why I don't say it's a goal you achieve or an uh, idea you achieve. Um, I actually came up with this quote last week. I said uh, in a conversation with one of my brothers, I said, we're always uh, a beta version of our actual true selves all the time. And we never reach our true full potential, our true full selves, because that's the game, right? That's life, right? It's, it's progress forever. And so for me, success is the achievement of an ideal. And once you achieve that ideal, you set new ideals and then go to achieve those as well. If you had a, a, you know, a goal to get up and hit the gym today and you hit the gym, you're successful today. But now you hit the gym, that's done. You're not dead. You have more to do. So we set new ideals, new goals, and keep striving and keep chasing our true selves, even though we never really get there or attain that. 
You know, I love that you touched on that because that's something that we often discuss is the importance of having little goals and what we call small victories. And you touched on it is your goal for today could be just something as simple as going to the gym or finishing a book or having lunch with a potential new client. And once you have achieved that goal, then you make another goal. And I, and I love your definition of the ideal you, and then that should continually move and change and improve. So, so I really like how you, how you touch on that. If you had to define yourself and you could only use one word, what would that word be? Competitive. Competitive. I would even put petty in there. Competitive. Um, I don't know. I'm just, just to give some context, I was at, there's a, a famous uh, comedian, name is Michael Blackston, and I was at his house yesterday, and the day before yesterday, and they were trying to sell him this $10 million penthouse in, in the W residence in Hollywood, and we were talking about it, and we went downstairs, and he was showing us the house he actually lived in, which was about six million dollars cheaper. And we were just kind of talking about how, you know, the one he was in was nice. I, don't, I didn't think he needed to spend all that extra money. It wasn't that big of a difference. But there was this football player there, professional athlete, not going to say his name, not going to put him on blast. But I see him and I kind of like wave because, you know, we know each other. We talk on, you know, Instagram and stuff. And he kind of like acts like he doesn't see me. He's like ignoring me. I'm like, is he trying to act like he's ignoring me? I'm like, I know he sees me. So I go up to him, I grab him and he kind of pauses and turns around and just kind of gives me a, Hey bro, how you doing? And I was just like, kind of like, Hey, and usually outside of that context, he's like, Hey, how's it going? And he's real talkative. But at this party where a lot of celebrities are at, he was kind of being like, kind of act like he didn't know me. And I was just kind of like, okay, all right. So <laughs> I left. And as soon as I got home, I wrote down um, four uh, BHAGs, uh, which are big, hairy, audacious goals. And, I was, and, and it, it just like he motivated me, like, all right, you want to be like that? Okay. I'm the, watch this year. After this year, I'm going I'm to take my brand to another level work with super bigger athletes and then you're going to be trying to work with me and I'm going to be the same way you were with me. And of course, when it happens and I achieve those goals, I won't be that way, but it's just how I am. It's just what motivates me. Negativity motivates me and positivity motivates me. And I'm just a competitive person. It's not a harmful thing. It's just, I just, I got that Kobe mindset. That's, that's quite a story as far as how and what motivates people. And I think it touches on you and obviously why you've been successful in coaching different athletes and, and different professionals, college as well as high school. And I think you touched on something that was, really, that was really neat in the sense of you can take a positive and a negative and you can use it to motivate you. And you could have gotten mad. You could have put them on blast. You could have reached out or gotten upset. But instead, you internalized it and said, okay, I'm going to hit this next level of of goals and achievement. And I know you wouldn't return the favor the way he did. So I, but I also know that it's going to internally motivate you to get to that next level. And I think that's the important part. And that's the cool part about just the question about success, because I can't tell you, Hey Roy, this is what success means to you. And just like you can't say, Hey Chris, this is what success means to you. But what we all can do is we can all learn and grow and build and take those little things and turn them in, inside and say, okay, I'm going to use this to motivate me to get to the next level. And I think that's so cool with social media and just the where technology is today, and today is you have the opportunity to find different things. And it could be, like you said, just getting to the gym, that's your goal of success today, or getting on another podcast or getting your book done, out there or whatever it is. But I think it's so important that you have those little things that motivate you each and every day. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, he's a good guy. And maybe he wasn't even being that way. But that's just kind of my beingness is to find any little thing to motivate me. I, you know, I remember when I was a kid, the first time I really wanted a, this toy, my dad was like, you know, if you want this toy, you have to write a autobiography on Michael Jordan. And he gave me Michael Jordan's rebound. And I remember... 
That was the first book I read. And I remember in the book, it talked about how Jordan would find anything to motivate him to so that way he could really go at you. Like you would like say, like, hey, like, hey, Jordan, you, know, hey, you, you better get excited when you talk to me. Like it, he would find anything to just motivate himself. And I found myself, I kind of do that same thing. So maybe he wasn't even being a rude guy. I don't know. But the way I looked at it was he was. And you know what? I got something for him. <laughs> no, that's that's interesting that you touched on on that aspect too. And I think the, the cool part about what motivates us is, and the one thing that we talk about is maybe he was just having you know a terrible day as well. Maybe he was going through some personal stuff. But regardless, you know, you're going to turn that into something positive in your life. So one of the things we talk about almost every single show is morning or daily rituals. And as we're always looking to improve and add to our listeners, I was curious if you had either a personal daily or morning ritual that you swear by. Um, I go into my center every morning, every day. Um, uh, uh, my center is a thing that I do and the thing I do with my athletes. And what it is, is it's a powerful abstraction that we create in our heads that gives us a way of being and acting uh, for the day. And what that abstraction is, is we create a room. And in that room, we bring in the things we love, the things that motivate us. We have a closet in that room with, with all the clothes. We have a file folder in that room with the numbers to everyone in the world and also uh, all the facts in the world. And so every morning when I wake up, when I meditate, I go, pretend I'm in that center and I go into that room in my head and I sit down in my chair and I intentionalize what I'm going to do today. Like, okay, okay, I have to go speak in Malaysia today. Okay, cool. You know what? Let me, let me get Tony Robbins on the phone. And I imagine that I'm literally getting on the phone with him, having a conversation with him, asking him questions. And even though it's a powerful abstraction that still teaches me. And I'll even, then I'll go to my closet in that room, put on something. And what we call it is that we call it our superhero uniform. So I have a player go into there, take off his suit, put on his jersey. And uh, one of the players I have, he wants to play for Duke. So we have him go in there. There's a Duke jersey in there. And he puts it on before he, every day before he practices or shoots shots, he goes in there to put on his Duke jersey. And it's a powerful abstraction. It's a powerful abstraction that gets him to practice really hard and in a way that's going to get him on that Duke level, if that makes any sense. No, it definitely makes sense, and I think the power of visualization and whether it's law of attraction, whether it's affirmations, people call them obviously different things, but I think it's so powerful when you put yourself in that mindset, and I think your your analogy of putting on your Duke uniform is obviously for us being basketball guys, is a, it's easy for us, but for someone else, maybe it's them imagining that they're holding their best-selling book or imagining that they're signing that first big check or their down payment for their home, whatever it is. I think it's important to have that visualization because that's what allows people and there's a saying with within the book the secret if you can see it in your mind you can hold in your hands and I think that's really really powerful that you touch on that so I wanted to change lanes here if you don't mind and wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we talk about on our on our show and with our company and I wanted to ask you what the word accountability means to you the word accountability means integrity for me and by integrity, I mean being totally congruent with what you say you're going to do. If my if I tell someone I'm going to do something, or if I tell myself I'm going to do something, being accountable is is doing what I say to myself or what I tell others I'm going to do, doing it the right way and doing it on time. And it also includes saying, I'm not going to do that if I don't want to. You know, a lot of times we want to look good. And so we tell people we're going to do things even though we're not. 
or maybe we force ourselves to do them, but we don't do them with the power and the oomph in the correct way to do them because we really didn't want to do them. So just being congruent and being authentic with our communication is accountability for me. I like that. And that's another part of, of a question that is very specific. And I can't tell you, nor can you tell me how to define it. So I really, I really liked how you define that. And this past month, we started our theme of paying it forward, where we're giving to other people with zero expectations in return. So I was curious what the term paying it forward means to you. Paying it forward means to me means giving literally without expectations of getting anything back. Um, I actually had this argument with someone the other day. Um, this girl opened the door for someone and the person came to the door and didn't say thank you. And she got upset. And I was like, well, why are you opening the door for her if you weren't doing it from an authentic place of truly just wanting to help her? You did it because you wanted agreement, because you wanted to say thank you. And we got into a little argument argument about it but to give without expectations of getting back not only is it just a great thing to do as a great human being but it makes us feel good it releases oxytocin it and oxytocin helps us get rid of um all those big dopamine and addiction things that we have in us whether that's actual addictions to drugs or mental addictions or or even sugar and food addictions uh, just to paint some context, um, if you are addicted to sugar or donuts or something like that, people always ask me, like, how are you able to just cut sugar? And I, I'm like, because oxytocin. If I give away candy or give away donuts or give away something to other people, it literally cleans out my dopamine receptors and I won't even really want to intoxicate myself with sugar anymore because the oxytocin is so much better for me it's good for your immune system it does so much great things because nature has given us that because it it rewards us for doing things that we should be doing and that's one of the things and i would argue the top thing that we should be doing in life is and i believe that's why we have our gifts so that we can give to others and bring value to the world it's not for us I love that. And that's something that we're really fortunate to be able to share with people is the whole concept and idea of, of paying it forward with zero expectations in return. So I'm glad that you gave your perspective on that. So I wanted to ask you, Roy, if there's anything exciting that you're working on or something that's coming out soon that you'd like to tell our listeners about. Oh my gosh, I'm so busy right now. I need a double. Um, I just did a TED talk two weeks ago. Ted Watts on performance and bridging the gap between performance with athletes and with success with uh, just any average person. So that should be coming out on Ted. In the next 10 to 15 days, I'm writing another book called The Unfair Advantage um, that I'm promoting out to NBA coaches. I'm actually going to reach out to other sports too, NFL, um, baseball, all the other sp- all the other sports just helping them understand that until you're in integrity, none of the strength training, none of the sports psychology, none of the teamwork, all of that stuff that they spend millions of dollars on won't even work unless you're in integrity. Um, And that book is a short book, writing that um, and putting together a few courses, putting together a course I teach trainers how to, take their brand to a six-figure level called Six Figure Trainer, working on that. That comes out July 1st. And then August 1st, I'm also releasing a speaker's course. Anyone who wants to be a speaker, get on stages and get paid for their for their advice. Um, and then lastly, this is the one I'm most excited about, is I'm making a course called The Potential Accelerator. Literally... A distinction that when someone understands it and impl- applies it, your potential, how good you can be in this moment, you will perform at that level instantly. And I know that's a bold claim and a big promise, but I've seen it time and time again. As soon as people get this distinction, it's kind of the same thing I teach in the book, but I give total access to it with this course they'll be able to perform how they know they can right 
now. And I'm just super busy, man. I've got a bunch of stuff coming. That's exciting. It sounds like you definitely have your your hands full in, in a really cool and exciting way. And I think you're probably similar to me is when you're doing a lot of things and you're really busy, you're, you just feel more valuable. And, and I think that's obviously a testament to all the things that you have going on. And congrats on all those things, including your, your most recent TED Talk. So I wanted to ask you, before we let you go, if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. Um, yes. Without integrity, nothing works. Um, this is something I found that's completely, it's not totally new. I, I've seen a couple philosophers talk about it. Look with Wittgenstein, uh, Martin Heidegger, Werner Erhardt talk about it, but I just really got it recently. And it's been something that I'm bringing to my work. And just to touch on it real quick, integrity means to be whole and complete and undivided. And if we think about a bicycle wheel, if the bicycle wheel is not complete, if we take spokes out of the middle of the bicycle wheel, the wheel won't be able to roll as well as it can. And eventually it won't be able to roll at all because it's un, it's undivided. It's not complete. So the wheel can't do its job. And so the integrity of a person is the person's word because we're thinking things or things that can think. And so if your word is not complete and your word is undivided, you won't be able to perform at your levels either. And so there's there's six aspects of your word. Can't dive into it. It would take too long. But please walk in integrity and stay honorable, even if it doesn't feel good, even if it may you may lose some money, you may lose some friends, you may lose something. If you stay honorable honorable, and stay in integrity, you will still be able to work just like that bicycle will, and your potential and your performance will go to the next level. That's great advice, and I truly appreciate you you sharing that with us. And the last question, Roy, is what's the best way for our listeners to connect or follow you for those that would like to find out more or possibly find out some about your courses and things coming out? So I, I have all the modalities. Uh RoyRed.com, that's R-O-Y-R-E-D-D.com for free stuff. I'm on Instagram, Roy, R-O-Y underscore Red, R-E-D-D, at, uh, on IG. Uh, the same one on Twitter, and I'm also on Facebook. Reach out, talk to me, I talk back. You could DM me, I get free stuff, free value, free information. And yeah, reach out to me. Listen, my man, I truly appreciate your time. I know you have, obviously, as you mentioned, a million things going on. So I truly appreciate what you share with us today. And I definitely would recommend our listeners to connect with you on those different social media platforms. And I look forward to hopefully talking with you soon. And I want to thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for what you do. And I appreciate you. Thank you for listening to episode number 134. Roy shared an interesting story about how he got on the news, but not in the way in which he wanted to. His interest in personal development and becoming the best version of himself all came from a very simple exercise. He typed in the word success on a Google search. He started clicking, and the third video from the top was of a gentleman by the name of Jim Rohn. Hungry for improvement and a better life, Roy took action, and right then and there he decided that he wanted to be successful. Initially, it began with something as simple and basic as reading a book a week. One thing Roy shared, which I loved, was when he said that sometimes when you hit the bottom, it springboards you back up. Roy's definition of success was very interesting. He said it's the achievement of an ideal you have for yourself. When Roy spoke about paying it forward, he said that to him it means giving literally without expectations of anything at all in return. And by doing that, it makes us all feel good. In conclusion, Roy stressed the importance of walking in integrity and staying humble. As we continue with our Pay It Forward movement, very simply, today, I challenge every single one of our listeners to do one thing for someone else and to do it with zero expectations in return. Do it because it makes that person feel good. Do it for them. Do it for others. And share a post with us or tag us on either Facebook or Instagram as we look to continue our movement as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. 
to quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.